of all the saints are yeah. to God. Our prayers today are just as precious to God. Yeah. But God will not hear our prayers if we are purposely living in sin. Now, refusing to turn from our wicked way, in this God will only hear the cry of repentance yep. if it comes. Now, what we may what may seem unthinkable, but is sadly true, all too many saints do not take advantage of prayer. They ask others to pray, but do not pray themselves. Now, this is the highest form of communication that we can have with the Lord. Why would you not want to avail yourself of such? Now, a lot of people, when they do pray, all they do is complain. That isn't how God wants us to pray. That's one thing we're learning about back in the classroom with the kids, is what form you should have when you pray. Because we're to enter his courts with praise and thanksgiving, yes. not complaints and petitions right away. We should thank him for everything he's done for us. Now, sometimes if you are true about thanking him for what he's done for us, you might forget what you wanted because you get into that and the Lord will just flow through you with it. So if you go with thanksgiving like you should, he may take care of your problem before you ask because mm -hmm. the word says he knows what we need of before we ask. Yep. So take advantage of prayer, not just at bedtime, but throughout your day. It'll it'll relieve a lot of stress because if you're worried about something, taking it to the Lord will lift it above your shoulders. Amen. Now the angel then casts this um, censer to the earth, and this is where the voices and the thunderings and lightnings and the earthquake happen. Now this tells us that these judgments are coming with each trumpet trumpet blast. blast will be worse than the seal judgments. Now the angels are preparing to sound their trumpets. Now as we do this study in the book of Revelation, we need to realize that God is calling for repentance. The call for all to hear is a warning, is warning us of what is coming to those who refuse his son. Just as in the book of Jeremiah, God used him to warn Israel of the coming judgment. He even gave details of what was going to happen to King Jedekiah on how he was to be caught and taken to the Babylon, but never to see his place of prison because his eyes were going to be put out. So he is never going to see it. And he was given every detail of what was going to happen. But unfortunately, Jedekiah refused to repent, refused to listen to what Jeremiah had to say. So God had no choice but to carry out judgment. Now that goes for all of Israel because of their idolatry. So they refused to turn and listen to God. They would rather listen to the prophets who gave them good news. They didn't want to hear the bad news. They only wanted to hear the good news. So once, once you start listening to that only, then you fail to listen to the truth. Now, God, like I said, God had no choice but to um, carry out judgment. The same, the same will be coming soon. I don't think we're doing the study in Revelations by accident. Well, I believe that God is trying to warn the people, especially in the churches, of what's coming. And you don't want to be part of that. Right. So man is, and, and if you look around this world, and look even in our own country, man is daring God to pass judgment. Yes. Mm -hmm. Think about all the sin that is taking place that they're calling good. They're calling evil good and good evil. Yes. And they're daring God to judge them. Unfortunately, one of these days soon, God will pass that judgment. We don't know when, but we are to live our lives as though tomorrow will be the day He calls us home. So, we aren't, now that doesn't mean you can't save money. That doesn't mean you're supposed to be wise with your finances. You can just spend free because tomorrow might not be here. Well, tomorrow may be here. You might want to use your money wisely. But uh, as the world becomes more and more wicked, someday soon God will have no choice but to uh, pass judgment. Now, man in his corrupt state um, will feel like God had no right to do such. As they did then in Jeremiah's day, they didn't really, they didn't feel God had the right to, to do everything that they did to, um, to them. Now, as many believers today 
when judgment hits their lives, what is the first thing they say? I'm sure you've all heard it. Why did God do this to me? Yeah. Why me? I'm so good. I go to church. I pay my tithes. I read my Bible. Why me? Well, obviously God has been trying to deal with you about something Amen. that you refuse to acknowledge. So God will have no choice one day but to pass judgment. Another thing you hear, why did I deserve that? Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, nobody wants to admit that they've done something wrong in their lives. Well, but when God and the Holy Spirit is poking at you and poking at you, <laughs> and you turn your head like, nope, that's not me, and justify what you're doing, judgment will have to come. Because God doesn't want you going this way. He wants you going here with Him. Yeah. And He can't get you here if you're going this way. Unless... Something happens in your life that causes you to run back. Yep. All of us do it. We're all. Just, I think we're all the same. No, none of us is perfect. Now, the first trumpet, as the first, this next slide will show us. This is the first angel as he steps forward and blows his trumpet with the blast. Hail and fire mingled with blood will be cast upon the earth, which will wreak havoc and cause untold chaos. Now a third of the trees and all the green grass will be burned up. Now the third part could be speaking of a third part of Mediterranean, which will include like the old Roman Empire, um, as this next slide will show us with the... Now the, the dark orange is the old Roman Empire. That was all the land that was part of the old Roman Empire. Um, so it could be a third of that, along with, uh, which includes North... Uh, Africa, the Middle East, much of Europe, and parts of England. Now, as I've stated before, in my opinion, I think when it says the, a third, it could cost, possibly cover the whole earth. But God is po it is possible for God to just concentrate on one small area as he did with Egypt. Because Egypt got the, the plague, but the land where the Israelites stayed, they got nothing. Yep. So it's not like God can't keep it in just one small area. But when he says the, uh, uh, upon the earth, my thinking is the earth, a third of the whole earth. But I could be wrong. Now, because this judgment will take place on the earth, I, you know, like I said, it might not be one small area. Now, at this time, I am sure the news media will be scrambling to make sense of what's going on. Think of how stuff happens now. It happens in the, Facebook has it before the news does. Yeah. So with the so social media and all that stuff, um, science scientists will be coming running, meteorologists will come running, whoever to come and try and explain away what is going on because you know it's not it can't be God. There's got to be some cosmic force in the atmosphere that's you know greenhouse gas, you know whatever <laughs> could be causing it. But they'll try and find some way to explain it away. Now, like I said, social media will be going crazy with eyewitness accounts, while others are crying that God has sent this terrible ordeal. Now, there could even be preachers proclaiming, you know, how they do and standing on the street corners going, repent, you know, the world is coming to an end. So, I mean, just your imagination can go with that when trying to figure out what is happening. Because, you know, like when there's a volcano or an earthquake or, you know, like the fires in Australia, I'm sure social media was covered with all eyewitness accounts showing uh, what's going on. Now, if we look at this next slide, this is the second trumpet. So the second angel will step forward um, and sound his trumpet. This judgment will be worse than the first one. This blast will signal a burning meteor from heaven that will strike the sea. Now, this sea could be the Mediterranean Sea, as that is the sea that is mostly talked about in the Bible. Because it doesn't say, you know, seas, plural, it just says one sea. Now, when this happens, one third of the sea will turn to blood, as in the days of Egyptians. You know, during the ten plagues, the water was turned to blood. Now, so this is something God can easily do. Now, God created this world and everything in it down to the smallest of elements. So to think God cannot turn water into blood is foolish, and limiting God is foolish. Yes, 
Now a third of the sea creatures will die, whales and fish. Now there will be ships in the area that will be destroyed, causing great loss of life. Now what is being described here is not speaking of spiritual symbolism, but will actually happen. These events will literally take place, and life on earth will be in chaos. The terror, terror will strike the heart of all those who will live through it, but sadly, they will still refuse to repent, as we will learn. As Pharaoh of old refused to let Israel go, man will refuse to repent, such is the evil heart. heart. Mm -hmm. Now this next slide will show us the third trumpet. This third angel will step forward and blow his trumpet. His judgment obviously is progressively worse than the last. Yet another meteor will fall to the earth, but this time it will hit a third of the rivers, a third of the um, fountains of water. Now the fountains of water um, aren't like fountains like we think of, like bird baths and stuff like that. These are actually natural springs. These would be the springs up underground and whatever water flows underground. This could also affect the same area as the other meteor, which hit. Now, the name of this meteor is actually given to us. They've actually named, this one actually had a name. Now it's, and it is named as a description, and its name was Wormwood, which carries the same properties that, this, that there is a plant on Earth holds. Because there's a wor uh, wormwood plant here on earth, which causes things to become bitter and makes one extremely sick. Now, when the waters become bitter, it will become poisonous and will cause many to die. The earth has seen these judgments, but on a much smaller scale. Think of the stories in Genesis where Lot refuses to, uh, or is rushed out of Sodom with, and fire and brimstone fall upon Sodom, Gomorrah, and all the neighboring cities, except for the one that Lot is allowed to go into. Now, uh, this next slide, which will show the fourth trumpet. Now the fourth angel will finally step forward and blow his trumpet. And immediately this trumpet will signal a third of the plants, planets of uh, heaven, including the sun and moon, will become dark. This will shorten the day by a third and will lengthen the night or make the night a third extremely dark because it'll take out quite a few of the stars. Now we are not told exactly how this judgment will affect the earth or the people on it, but as far as man is concerned, but it will definitely cause things on earth to change. As I've mentioned before, the moon affects the tides the reproductive cycles of animals, as well as the migration of specific birds and animals. So all of that, and their sleep, or, uh, their sleep will be messed up just like when a, the a eclipse happens, they get confused. So that tells you that they, de they depend on the sun, the moon, and everything else that goes in there. Yep. Now they say that this darkness will be so dark, like in the time of the plagues also, that you could almost feel it. I couldn't imagine having a dark where it just feels like it's you know, on you. I've never been in a place that dark. So that would be kind of, kind of scary. <coughs> now, like I said, with the sun and the, the moon being out, this will also add greatly to the chaos throughout the earth. Now, there will be all kinds of reasons thought uh, for this kind of stuff taking place, man will try to explain it away, and I'm sure many will be crying that the world is coming to the end, you know, like the sky is falling. Terror will be in the hearts of millions, and I'm sure you will have false prophets saying they are Christ and people must follow them if they want to live, etc. Now, some will feel that, this, that suicide is the only way to save themselves, thinking the world's coming to the end. Um, since the world's going to be self, you know, destruct, you know, maybe the sun's going to collide and blow us up or, or something like that, or a bigger meteor will blow us up. You know, whatever reason they come with, with, yeah. with you know, you could think of a million things they can explain away. Now, the mind of man will conjure up all kinds of things to escape repentance. 
which is really sad because repentance is so much easier. Because all you got to say is, Lord, forgive me. Amen. That's it. Now, the last section is the announcement of the three woes. Now, another angel is now introduced, and John saw this angel flying through heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth. Now, there are actually two Greek words used for inhabitants. One is par, parikio, excuse me if I'm butchering that, which means to dwell as a sojourner. A sojourner is someone who travels, so it's not stable. And then there's kadokio, which means settled down, like they've made a home. Now, this speaks to all those who have made this world their home. If you have made this world your home, and this is where you put all your weight and all your faith in, woe to you. Woe to those who have built their hopes and dreams down here in this world. We are told in the Word of God to store our treasures up in heaven, and not on this earth. But all too many Christians store their treasures here as physical, tangible items, and forget to hunger and thirst after righteousness and after those things that are spiritual. So this angel is warning those on earth that although what has already happened was horrible beyond belief, what is coming will be much worse. And this warning is given out of the mercy of God. He doesn't have to tell people. He can just do it. But out of his mercy and his love for this world and the people in it, he tries again to get them to repent. To give them another opportunity to, to say they're sorry for the way they're doing and to turn around and live the right way. Now this angel will call to attention to the remaining three judgments that have yet to come and signifies that the horror is about to intensify. Now I have I read somebody uh, had wrote a description and I thought it was a very good one. Um, In the Bible, I think there's about 600 um, variations of the word hell and a description of you know what it is. So, um, or about 600 warnings of, of hell. And if you were to travel down the interstate, okay, you know when you travel down, you see all those mile markers everywhere. Now, if you were to travel down the interstate and you hit a mile marker, that says this way to hell. And then you go down another mile and it says, this way to hell. Now, common sense will tell you, you keep going and you hit about 600 of them, you ought to know by now where you're going. Right? So if you continue down that road that says this is the way to hell, then you are deliberately going that direction so you know what your final destination will be. Now, all of us have been on that road once in our life. But every now and then there's going to be an exit sign. This way to glory. It's your choice if you get off of that road or if you continue on to hell. Now, I know some people, preachers, don't like to speak about hell, don't like to tell you, hey, if you live in sin, if you you know, are living together and you're not married, if you um, have a stealing habit, if you're an alcoholic, a drug addict, whatever, you're headed for hell. They don't like to say that because that offends people. They don't want to know that they're going to hell. They want to think that they're doing good in the life that they're in. Yep. So if you preach about going to hell, then you're a fire and brimstone preacher and they don't want to hear you. Well, praise God. That's what I want to be. I want to be able to warn you ahead of time where you're going to keep you from going there. It is my job and anybody's job behind this pulpit to be a watchman. And we are to warn you of what your destination will be. We can't sugarcoat it because then the blood will be on our hands. Because if you're doing something wrong and I don't tell you you're doing something wrong, then I am responsible and will get punishment for that. But if I warn you and you choose not to listen, that's on you, not on me. Because I've done my job. Now, out of the love and mercy that God showed me, I will continue to deal with you. I will continue to mention, hey, this is wrong, in hopes that the Holy Spirit 
You'll have that one push that will turn you around. That is our goal, is to see your soul saved. Once that happens, all of heaven will rejoice. We will rejoice with you. But, um, if you choose to go the other route, then Satan will rejoice because he's got another one. Yep. We want to make sure we snatch as many people out of the claws of Satan as we possibly can, and that's our job yes. as pastors and teachers in this church. And all of you, as you go out, you are to disciple and do the same thing out there. Because that rule in the Word that Ezekiel in chapter 3 tells you about, that you're a watchman, applies to you all also. Amen. doesn't mean just behind this pulpit. You have to let people know. Because if you don't let them know, then it's on you. But if you do tell them and they refuse to listen, like I said, you're free. You're, you're free of blame. So, if, it, if, you're, if you see someone traveling down that road and they know where they're going, then, I mean, there's not much you can do. Except keep praying for them and keep witnessing. Now, this angel may possibly be one that is actually seen flying through the air, but we are not told for sure. Um, but that does not change the fact that judgment is coming. Amen. And that's where we'll end and we'll start next week with chapter 9.